Your, your AI people with this fucking chat GPT shit. This your, scares your the fuck out of me. What it's your mean? people. What do you mean, your, your AI people? people. <laughs> your your uh, wacky coders. What have you done? Yeah, it's super interesting. Fascinating. It, language models, I don't know if you know what those are, but that's the general uh, systems that uh, underlie chat GPT and GPT. They've been progressing over the past maybe four years aggressively. There's been a lot of development. GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3. Uh, GPT 3.5 and chat GPT there's a lot of interesting technical stuff that maybe we don't want to get into sure that, let's get into it well that was, I'm, I'm fascinated by it so chat GPT is based on fundamentally on a 175 billion uh, parameter neural network that is GPT 3 and the rest is what data is it trained on and how is it trained so you already have like a brain, mm -hmm. a giant neural network, and it's just trained in different ways. So Chad, uh, GPT-3 came out about two years ago, and it was like impressive but dumb in a lot of ways. It was like you would expect as a human being for it to generate certain kinds of text, and it was like saying kind of dumb things that were off. And you're like, all right, this is really impressive, but it's not quite there. You can tell it's not intelligent. And what they did with... Uh, GPT 3.5 is they started adding more and different kinds of data sets there. One of them, probably the smartest neural network currently, is Codex, which is fine-tuned for programming. Like it was, it was uh, trained on code, on programming code. And when you train on programming code, which Chat, Chat GPT is also, you're teaching it something like reasoning, because it's no longer. Uh, information and knowledge from the internet it's also reasoning you can like logic even though you're looking at code programming code is you're looking at me like oh, what geez. the f is he talking about no no but, no no that's not no. what I'm looking at so, I'm looking at you like oh my god but, but reasoning is a in order to be able to stitch together sentences that make sense you not only need to know the facts that underlie those sentences you also have to be able to reason yeah and, and we think of it we take it for granted as human beings that we can do some common sense reasoning like like this war started at this date and ended at this date therefore it means that uh, like the start and the end has a meaning there's a temporal consistency there's a cause and effect all of those things are inside programming code by the way a lot of stuff I'm saying we still don't understand we're like intuiting why this works so well really but these are the intuitions yeah there's a lot of stuff that are not clear so chat Ch so GPT 3.5 which chat GPT is likely based on there's no paper yet so we don't know exactly the the details but it was just trained on on code and more data that's able to give it some reasoning then this is really important it was fine-tuned in a supervised way by human labeling small data set by human labeling of here's what we would like this network to generate here's the stuff that makes sense here's the kind of dialogue that makes sense here's the kind of answers to questions that make sense it's basically pointing this giant titanic of a neural network into the right direction that aligns with the way human beings think and talk so it's not just using the giant wisdom of uh, Wikipedia and I can talk about what data sets is trained on but just basically the internet it was pointed in the wrong direction so this uh, supervised labeling allows it to point in the right direction to when it says shit you're like holy shit that's pretty smart so that that's the alignment and then they did uh, something really interesting is using reinforcement learning uh, based on labeling data from humans this, that's quite a large data set the task is the following you have this smart GPT 3.5 thing generate a bunch of text and humans label which one seems the best the ranking like uh, you ask it a question uh, for example you could do uh, generate a joke in the style of Joe Rogan right and you have a label they have five options and you have a label there's a much see no, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know which, I don't know how exactly but uh, it uh, so you, you get it to rank the the human label is just over sitting there there's a very large number of them they're working full-time they're labeling the ranking of the outputs of this model and that kind of ranking, used together with a technique called reinforcement learning, is able to get this thing to generate very impressive to humans output. So it's not actually, there's not a significant breakthrough in how much knowledge was learned. That was already in, G in GPT-3. 
and there was much more impressive models already trained. So it's on the way, not just OpenAI, but this kind of fine, fine tuning, it's called, by human labelers plus reinforcement learning, you start to get like, like where uh, students don't have to write essays anymore in high school, yeah. where you can uh, style transfer, like I said, uh, do a uh, Louis C.K. joke in the style of Joe Rogan, or Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan joke in the style of Louis C.K., and does an incredible job uh, at, at those kinds of style transfers. It can uh, more accurately query things about the different historical events, all that kind of stuff.